Hello and welcome to another race recap video. In this one, I did my first triathlon of 2022, which was a local sprint triathlon in Biddeford. Overall, I'm pleased with my performance, but I definitely realized I made a few mistakes, which not only cost me time, but also a few places overall. So I think it makes sense that we go in order of the race. So let's start with the swim. So there wasn't a huge number of people participating today, and the swim started with seven waves of around 10 people each. So the slower waves went first, which I didn't really understand as I would have thought that the quicker swimmers would have been better off going first and getting out of the way and not overtaking people and then ultimately crowding transition. But that's what the organizers decided, so we went with it. So I ended up finding myself in the third wave, which I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, I don't recall giving them an estimated swim time and I do consider myself to be a pretty decent swimmer, so I would have thought I'd been in one of the later waves. So the klaxon went off and I started my swim and I did find myself overtaking quite a few people at the very beginning. I think I was third back in transition overall at this stage. Now the first mistake I made in this race was with my sighting and not keeping my swim in a straight line. The tide was actually taking me back down the river, so I had to fight it in order to get onto the right hand side of the buoy. After that first buoy, I was fine. I kept in my line all the way to the steps where you exit the swim and approach T1. I think the swim was just under 500 meters, certainly according to my Garmin, and it took me just under seven minutes. On to T1 now, which is where the biggest mistakes were made by far. Firstly, I once again struggled to get my wetsuit undone. Now this isn't the end of the world as I did manage to get the zip down before I got to my bike, but it's just added stress that I really didn't need. What I consider to be the biggest mistake that I made in the entire race was not picking up my race belt. So I actually did all of the bike course without my race number. I guess technically I could have been disqualified for this, but even if anyone noticed, it probably wouldn't have mattered that much being such a small local event. T1 took me two minutes and considering how small the transition area was, that was far too long. And this is definitely something I want to improve for next year. So the bike was up next, which I think went pretty well. I think I was quite far ahead at the front during the first portion of the bike out towards Torrington. Heart rate was still high at this point, but not too uncomfortably high. It was certainly manageable. I did eventually get caught by Fletcher Powell, who ultimately won the race. And I was surprised to actually be able to stay on his wheel for a little while. And of course, that will change when we came to the first climb at Land Cross and he left me for dust. And a couple others caught me up at this point and overtook me as we were coming up Station Hill into Torrington. Next up was the roundabout, which we had to go all the way round and head back through town towards Station Hill again. Now, this is where I think I lost the most amount of time on the bike and is what ultimately allowed other people that were behind me to catch me up and I got stuck behind a van who wasn't moving very fast at all for some reason. One positive I did take from it is that it allowed me to recover a bit. Just down Station Hill, we entered another climb up towards Monkley, so I was able to recover a little bit from Station Hill in preparation for that one. And at this point, I did have someone else's wheel to stick to, which I managed to hold on to for the remainder of the bike course. The bike took me just under 47 minutes, which I was pretty happy with considering the elevation and being a bigger guy and my average speed was 30k per hour. What did surprise me was that the bike course is where a lot of other athletes made up time on me, which I was quite surprised about because I thought that'd be on the run. Into T2 now, which went a lot better than T1, I was off my bike quickly and got it racked. I made a point of picking up my race belt this time, but then in the hurry, I managed to snap my toggles on my laces but thankfully they managed to stay secure and didn't move around. But again, this is another mistake that I could avoid in future, just with a little bit of practice beforehand. Another mistake I made was not picking up my gel, which I planned to take on the run. Not the end of the world as I didn't really need it, but I did also miss the water station as we exited transition. I was hoping to get a quick swig and throw one over my head, but yeah, completely missed that one. T2 took me exactly one minute before I head out onto the 5K run. As you'd expect, the first kilometer was the quickest, but thankfully this didn't seem to have too much impact on the remaining four. For the entire run, I had another athlete where I could sit on his shoulder, where we averaged around 408 kilometers. After crossing the bridge, we were onto the Tark Trail and running along that until we reached the halfway point where there was a water station. I made sure to grab two, one to try and get in my mouth and the other one to pour over my head, as at this point in the morning, it was getting really quite hot. At this point, I took a turn on the front on the remainder of the Tark Trail, and then the athlete that I was working with overtook me 
and went ahead as we were going back towards the quay. He was starting to pull away at this point and my quads were starting to cramp up, so I didn't think I was able to keep up with him. The only saving grace was that he missed the turn point towards the finish, which allowed me to make up a few seconds on him before he ultimately crossed the line just a handful of seconds before me. At this point, I thought I'd done quite well, possibly even making the top 10 as there wasn't that many guys in the finish area before me. But with the time trial start, I wouldn't know my final position until later in the day. So to wrap up the race, I finished my first sprint distance triathlon in one hour and 19 minutes, according to my Garmin, which I am pleased with, as I thought I'd probably get maybe an hour and a half. Position-wise, I came 13th overall out of 88 athletes, which included the relay teams, so there's certainly nothing to grumble about. I actually felt quite good afterwards, which I was quite surprised about, given that it's pretty much an all-out effort for the entire race. But I was glad for the run to be over, as my quads were starting to cramp up, and I really didn't want that to develop into full-blown cramp, which would end up affecting my run. So I did want to give a quick shout out to Paul Sharp, who I believe watches these videos. Paul was also racing and shouted a few words of encouragement to me on the run, and I didn't actually realise it was him until later on. So Paul, if you're watching this, well done, you had a cracking race. And so that's a wrap up of my first sprint triathlon. I did enjoy this distance as it's an all out effort from the beginning, and every second really does matter, as I found in transition. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Off the back of this, I'm going to do a dedicated video on the lessons I've learned through this race, and also how that's ultimately going to feed into my 2023 season. If you click on the screen just here, you can see one of my recent videos where I run a last minute 5k, and that's actually another first, it was my first 5k road race. So if you could check that one out as well, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.